Hi, I'm Danny Wooten, Time Team's resident community archaeologist and find specialist. One of the things that we often get asked on Time Team is how can people, members of the public, get involved in the history, heritage and archaeology of their area? So we thought it'd be nice to do a piece on looking up five simple ways to help get you started and get involved in the archaeology near you. Community archaeology is a great way for local residents, volunteers, students and professionals to work together to discover more about the heritage and the archaeology of their local area. It's one of the principles that Time Team was founded on. Heritage is for everyone to enjoy and experience and there are many ways to get involved. Before we go any further, please do like this video by clicking the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bell to receive all the latest updates. You might also like to consider subscribing to our Patreon channel following the links below. Whilst we have some new Time Team excavations on the way, we hope you enjoy these little extras that YouTube enables us to share with you. Every new subscriber makes all the difference in helping us to bring you insights into the world of archaeology. So just before we get started, um, uh, there's a couple of books that you might be interested in here. This is an absolute classic. It's W.G. Hoskins, um, The Making of the English Landscape. And this is an absolutely fantastic book that starts from prehistory and looks at the development of the landscape through time, all the way through into the modern period, looking at how towns were planned and railways and canals and so on and so forth. This is an absolutely fantastic book that if you're really interested in landscape archaeology, everyone should have on their bookshelf. And I'm pretty sure that Stuart Ainsworth would agree with me on that. Secondly, we have Mick Aston and Christopher Gerrard's wonderful book, Interpreting the English Village. And this book is the culmination of many years of research with Mick and Christopher working with the local community in the village of Shapwick in Somerset. And basically this book tells the story of hundreds of years of the life of the village, how it developed from prehistory all the way through into the modern period. This is a great book because although it focuses on the village of Shapwick, its ideas can be applied for your local area. And uh, here we have Time Team's Dig Village, um, a guide to discovering the local history and archaeology of your community. It's a great book. A few years ago, I was involved in a project working with Stuart, Helen, Paul Blinkhorn, Richard Parker, Jimmy Adcock and several others working with the local community in Dunster. Um, and this book is based, we, we use lots of examples from Dunster um, of how we work with the local community, um, ideas for projects, how to get started, where to find information. Um, and so this is a, a great book for anyone that's considering getting involved in community archaeology or doing some local research in their area. Now, whilst this book and many of the examples that I'm about to give are UK based, they do contain ideas and wider methodologies that can be applied and transferred to researching heritage wherever you are. And so without further ado, here are five simple ideas to help get you started with community archaeology. Number five, take a walk in the countryside or town and city near you. Now this is one of the simplest because it's just about getting outside and taking a look around. It's about being observant, thinking like an archaeologist. Now many of you who've seen Time Team will know that while the rest of the team are busy digging trenches, Stuart Ainsworth heads off in the opposite direction. Now he's not just taking a leisurely stroll, he's reading the landscape, he's looking for the lumps and the bumps and he's using these clues to piece together information about how that landscape has developed and changed over time. And this is something that you can do too with a bit of practice. In Britain, you're never far away from an Iron Age hill fort or medieval field boundary or maybe even a stretch of Roman road. And it's about looking to recognise these, learning to recognise the shapes. Why is that lane doing that? Why is that field that shape? What's that funny bump in that field? And learning to sort of piece all these different elements of the landscape together will help you to learn and to recognise and understand more about the historic landscape around you. 
In towns and cities, you might want to have a look at the buildings. Now, quite often at ground level, you get modern shop fronts, but actually if you look up, um, you might spot maybe some timber frames, or you might, um, if you're lucky enough, there'll be a foundation stone that gives the date away of the building. Um, have a look at the roof. Can you see whether it's been chopped and changed about? Also, have a look at the number of chimney stacks that can quite often um, be a clue as to how many rooms were originally in the building. Also think about names, place names, field names, street names. Why have they got that name? Is there some memory there? Um, was it named after a local person? Is it a particular industrial activity that used to happen in that particular part of the city or of a field? It's about thinking about everything, looking at the shapes of things, finding out about the names of things, looking at buildings. It's really about just being observant and fitting it all together that will help you to understand much more about the history of your area. Number four, do some desktop digging. Now, whilst it's great to get out and explore the landscape, this isn't always possible but there are plenty of other ways to discover more from the comfort of your own home by doing some desktop digging. With more archives being digitised and more online resources available for free, there's a whole host of information at your fingertips. Here are just a few examples. The National Library for Scotland has some fantastic online resources. The old maps that are available on there are fantastic. Um, you're able to view for the UK um, the first, second and third series Ordnance Survey maps that date from, well, between about the 1880s up to about the 1920s. And by being able to zoom in and look at the maps of your area, you can actually see how the landscape has changed over time. It's what you call doing a map regression. So have a look at the National Library for Scotland. Um, have a look at those old Ordnance Survey maps of your area. The Portable Antiquities Scheme has a fantastic online database and this is available to view for free. It contains information about all the finds that have been recorded in England and Wales. So you're able to go online and look at what's been found in your local area. The Heritage Gateway website is another fantastic online resource to help get you started, find out what's in your local area. It's a culmination that pulls together all the information from various historic environment records in different counties throughout the UK. And use this to get started, to find out if there have been excavations in your area or listed buildings um, or any other kinds of historical information. It's a really great resource, so do have a look at that. Number three, visit an open day. Here in the UK, the Council for British Archaeology and the sister organisation, um, Archaeology Scotland, every year organise a festival of British archaeology. Have a look on their website because there will be events happening near you. There's, um, there's workshops, there's talks, there's events. You might be able to visit an excavation. Um, it's a fantastic way to find out more about what's in your area and meet like-minded people. I also know that there is National Archaeology Week in New Zealand and in Australia and I'm sure there are in many other parts of the world. So do look out for open days in your local area. Number two, do some volunteering. Now there are many ways to get involved in heritage through volunteering, many types of volunteer roles that you might like to consider. For example, have a go on an archaeological excavation. Contact your local university archaeology department to find out if they're running any excavations locally and are looking for volunteers. You might also want to contact your local museum to see if they have opportunities available. And then there are other organisations such as the National Trust. Um, also Historic England are running an online project called Enrich the List that you might want to look up. And also have a look at the Council for British Archaeology's website which provides lots of links to uh, finding out more about volunteering opportunities. Number one, join a local group or society. 
One of the best ways to get involved in local archaeology is to join a club. There are hundreds of local groups and societies in the UK doing some amazing work. They're often the first port of call for activities that we've already mentioned. And typically there are a range of ways that you can get involved, whether it's in the field or doing some desktop research or in a supporting role. Manege Archaeology Group on the Lizard Peninsula in Cornwall is a fantastic example of a thriving club doing amazing things. They're expertly guided by archaeologist and site director James Gossip. This club is at the heart of our recent dig in Cornwall in our upcoming episode featuring an Iron Age settlement in Fugu. Many of Time Team's most memorable digs came out of direct involvement from a local history society and it's that local knowledge and passion that's absolutely vital in getting a project off the ground. I'm hoping to get out and about this year and visit a few local groups myself. And if there isn't a group local to you, then do consider starting your own. Time Team's Dig Village is a great way to help get you started. So thank you for joining us today. I hope that's helped to inspire you get involved in local archaeology near you. So please remember to click that like button and I look forward to seeing you again soon. To ensure you catch all the latest updates, please do subscribe to this channel, follow us on social media, sign up to our newsletter and join us on Patreon.